They also don't typically CIP chocolate lines between batches like they do at basically every other food production facility. To clean the chocolate out of the line, they run what's called a pig from one end to the other. Every line has a pig launcher installed at the beginning and a pig catcher installed at the end. So they shoot this pig through with compressed air and that pushes all the chocolate out through the other end. The pigs that I've seen are typically like a little peanut shaped projectile. And this is a pig catcher. That bar in there is what stops the pig. The operator can pull this out, remove the pig and run the next batch. As far as building the jacketed piping though, it's quite the process. We're pretty much limited to a straight piece with a fitting and that's as big as we can build because you can't slide a jacket pipe around a fitting and you can't really slide a jacket at 90 onto a pipe. And it's all got to be done in a specific order. This is three by four jacketed tubing. So the first step is to weld the three inch 45 to the three inch pipe. No ferrules because you have to be able to slip these rings on. After that middle weld is made, then we can slip the jacket pipe and fitting over, make that weld, slip the rings on each end, put the ferrules on, and we do purge the inner pipe and the outer jacket at the same time. And when it comes to the T pieces, there's just no way to slip a big one over a little one. So we end up cutting those. You can see the seam right there. We cut the whole way around the T and put it on like a clamshell, weld it back up. So until we cut fittings in half, drill holes in jacket tubing and burn out all these rings, do all that extra welding, it ends up taking like four times longer to run jacketed tubing than regular sanitary tubing.